Welcome to the Utah Football Fans Podcast. Please like, subscribe, and share. And as always, go Utes! Welcome to the Utah Football Fans Podcast. I'm Bryn, here with James and Gary. It has been a while since all three of us have been together. It's good to see you, too. (laughs) It's good to be back. Good to see you guys. Should I call it the Utah Football and to-be-named hockey team fans podcast, maybe, in the future? We're going to have to figure that out. That's not too lengthy. I think that works. It's perfect. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's a great title. We'll we'll work on that. But welcome to everyone who is here live. Make sure you are following, you're subscribed. Give us that like button. If you're in the chat, say hello. We want to hear from you. Make sure you're following along on Twitter and Instagram. And again, subscribed on YouTube and hitting the notification button so that you'll know anytime we go live or a new episode comes out. Huge thank you to our sponsor, Thomas Orthodontics. Look him up at thomasortho.com. He's also got his Instagram and his Facebook page, so make sure you look him up there. Yeah. I hopefully you watched our interview with Yogi Roth from last week. That was I just have so many good things to say about it. He was just a joy to talk to. Like he was so open. I loved it. Yeah, it was awesome. It was it was a ton of fun. Um a lot of insight. So if you haven't listened to it, make sure you go back and listen to it because it, he it was pretty cool to hear some of the stories and for him to open up and for him to talk about things so openly. So I really enjoyed that a lot. That was that was that was a pretty cool experience. Gary, you were you missed. Did, yeah, you guys did a good job. I wish I could you know. have been there, but they kicked me out. Texas Mike, they wouldn't let me do it, man. <laughs> he had had one too many Red Bulls that day, and we couldn't risk it. So so there it is. Or let's go with the other one. Uh huh. <laughs> no, but I, you know, I was glad to hear he didn't explicitly say that we're still going to be seeing him on our TV screens, but he alluded to that he's still going to be whatever that means. I don't know. He did kind of drop that he might be calling Big Ten games. Yeah. He kind of mentioned that. So I don't know, but he I didn't hear that myself, but. Yeah, you know, he mentioned it early on in the in the interview. Um, kind of mentioned something about the Big Ten, but nothing's been official yet. He said so. But I don't know. We'll see him. I I hope he's I hope he's in the Big Twelve somewhere because th- those oh, are the yeah. teams. Well, I guess he was calling the other guys too. But anyway, so, so anyway, be it. And, it. and it was a great segue because he did broadcast our spring game that was on Saturday, the Utah spring game, twenty two forever game. You couldn't have asked for a better day. Last year, it was pouring rain during the spring game. And this year, it was probably the best weather you could you could ask for. So it was heaven. It was perfect. It was so it was so nice. <laughs> it was great. Sitting in rice eccles. I well, unfortunately be couldn't be there. But tell me how you guys felt about it. How did it feel being back in the stadium? You watch it, though. Did, didn't you get to see it? Yeah. On the on the network. Yeah. No, it was good to be back. It's good to be back in the stadium. It felt like going home. <laughs> Perfect day. You just kick back with a beverage. The best part where you could have a pretzel, a fresh pretzel, <laughs> because those are going to be the same pretzels you get in November. Oh. And they're as hard as a brick. So you get them now when they're fresh and you know the fresh salt. It wasn't too bad. Good. Uh, That's but- a good tip. <laughs> well, let's talk. Let's talk about your impressions, what you saw, what you felt. What you felt, I already see already see people making some comments about that. I'll just give you a couple of the thoughts I had about it, and then uh, tell me what you think about it. Um, so, Cam, I mean, first things first, Cam was on the field. I, I was surprised that he played so much, uh, but it was great to see him. Look, I don't put a lot of stock into uh, spring games or spring practice, or spring scrimmage, call it what you will. Um, you know, you got to be careful with reading too much into things, but he was back. 
And I thought he looked good. He was mobile. I thought his leg looked good. He was in command of the offense, as he should have been, but he, he was. He was very calm. And he, you, could, you could watch him reading the defenses as, as vanilla as they are in a spring game. But, you know, he'd check it down. We needed to check it down. He made some long throws. He looked good. So, very positive. And, and for me, when you watched him play and then you watched um, uh, Wilson and Rose, and this isn't a cut on those guys. I'm just saying there's this big gap between the starting QB who's been there for you know, a bunch of years and the other guys, uh, bottom line, as far as I thought, or what I saw is that cam looked really good for the situation. Um, yeah. then I'll just say this, as far as like the backup, I know that going into the game that, uh, Whittingham had said that the, the Rose and Wilson, it was pretty a dead heat for who's going to be the backup through spring ball anyway. Uh, my view is just watching the game. I'm not looking all to just the stats or anything like that, but just watching them play and watching them throw the ball. I thought Wilson actually uh, took the lead in that competition. Of course, we're talking spring. There's, you know, fall ball just before the season, but I don't know. That's my view. I thought Wilson actually looked pretty dang good. You can tell he loves to just throw it and wing it. Uh, Gunslinger type guy. I, I was impressed with some of the throws he made. Yeah, no, I would agree. I mean, it's really hard. Uh, don't look too much at spring ball, right? It's just, it's a scrimmage. We've, we've been burned with that in the past where you look at a stat line and you're, you know, blown away and then reality comes. But, um, you know, seeing Cam Rising jog out of the field, I'm not going to lie to you. It, 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 it rose some emotions uh, that inside of me that was, uh, it was great. <laughs> it was great. Um, and yeah, Gary, I echo everything you said. Obviously, Cam should look good, right? He's been in the system for four years. He knows the offense better than anybody. Um, it's just, it, it was really interesting to to see the difference so stark side by side because he's so calm back there. He knows the offense. He's got a command of it. Um, you're right. He knows when to take those shots. And again, it's a scrimmage. I, I understand that, but it just looks, it just looks different. Um, for me, yeah, Wilson, he has a lot of those things that you look for in a quarterback. Uh, you can just see the talent level there. He's young, so he he makes some dumb throws at a couple of those junctures. And but man, he he you can just tell there's something different there with him. Um it's really hard to base a lot off of this one scrimmage. But if I'm, you know, if it's me, yeah, he's my number two going into the season. And it, it's really not that hard. I expected. With Rose having already been there for a season, I expected a little bit more and was a little bit disappointed, honestly. Um, that's not to say that he doesn't have a ton of talent, but Wilson looked really good. He made some throws. I think everyone probably on social media or if you were there, that touchdown pass he had to, to King was, was beautiful. Um, and then honestly, the biggest thing for me, the biggest takeaway was, was seeing Singer at receiver out there. Uh, that That guy had flashes in that spring game that went – Holy cow. I haven't seen a guy like that maybe ever, maybe since Covey, right? He just had a couple of those catches and, and you could just see the talent level. And I think he had like three catches. So those things were really exciting. Keith, you played a little bit. So it was, it was encouraging and, and a beautiful day and, you know, hard to have any negatives come out of it and everyone stayed healthy, which was the biggest thing. <laughs> yeah. That's always the scary part. Um, so, yeah, I unfortunately couldn't be there in person, but I did then end up watching it on Pac-12 Network. So during the broadcast, they interviewed both Karine Reed and Lander Barton at different times. And it was interesting because both of those guys, because neither of them played in the spring game, um, but both of those guys made mention of how different the huddle is and how different the team is when mm -hmm. Cam is playing and when cam is involved and he's practicing and all these things and those are defensive guys so they're not even a part of the offense and yet they can feel the difference as to when cam is involved and we've heard that numerous times from different players so and we saw that a lot last year it wasn't just missing cam's 
talent on the field. It was missing that like spark that he brings to the team. So fingers crossed, we get to continue to see that he looked good again, spring spring ball so hard. And I think that's where I'm at with the QB two battle against Rose and Wilson. I do feel like Wilson kind of elevated himself more, but you're playing against not the number one defensive stars. I think a lot of the defense didn't actually play in the game. And Rose does have that year of experience on the team. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see after spring ends and then fall camp who comes. But Wilson mm -hmm. definitely made the case. He did look comfortable back there, but he's young. He's a, he'll be a freshman, a true yeah. freshman. He's like 18 years old. Yeah, he should have been so, a prom on Saturday night. Like he's he's literally should still be in high school. And and you can see that, but but just the talent, you there's no denying it. It it is there. And when you think about the pedigree, yeah, it makes a lot of sense, right? Like he his his older brother's an NFL quarterback. And you can see that influence. Um, and and then coming from Corner Canyon, which has a history of pumping out quarterbacks, and then you combine that with what is Gary doing now? <laughs> I'm I'm reading some of Texas Mike's <laughs> comments. I'm just saying Wilson looked great. There's a lot. There's a lot of positives. There's a lot of growth that needs to happen. Um, but it looked really, really good. So it was it was exciting. It was fun. They looked good. So, you mentioned Barton. I got to say this first of all. Good. You mentioned Barton. Barton, dude. What his neck is like massive mm -hmm. now. What He's happened? Over a massive day? neck. Oh no, it's I bigger. That neck. It's like that, shoulder width. Yeah. That neck was impressed. exercises are, are whatever incredible. they're doing, man. That's <laughs> it was impressive. But yeah, Dorian Singer. Sorry, Texas Mike. Singer, <laughs> that dude is the long, long. Here's how I look at it. As far as the passing game goes, with Dorian Singer, the deep ball just becomes a greater threat. He it's can, open now. It's open and money parks. You get these two. Yeah small guys with speed who can stretch the field. Uh, McLean, I don't think played. Mm -mm. You remember, I don't think he played in the game. Big receiver. Micah Pittman, uh, he played. But then you consider our tight ends. Keithy back. So you have these young speedsters or these small speedsters who can go deep. Cam made some good throws to him. Um then you got McLean, he's a big receiver. Pittman. And then you've got Keithy, Landon King, and who we didn't see is it um is it Carson Ryan. Riley? Yeah, Carson Ryan. Yeah, he didn't play. Uh, Carson Ryan from UCLA. I'm just you look at the threats on the receiving side, and then you've got Glover's coming back another year, and Makai Bernard, who is great out of the backfield in catching the ball. So, you know, the pieces seem to be there, and I know Witt has said that he they may be looking for another uh, wide receiver. So who knows? I was just impressed with the talent was out there in the spring game. So, yeah, I'm not going to put too much into it, but hey. This uh, is an interesting question, though, from Balzac in the chat of how, like what you're saying, Gary, is the passing game is going to be so great this year. And when was the last time that our passing game kind of eclipsed the running game? I mean... I got to see that. Hey, Baltac, yeah. I've got, <laughs> I have got to see that happen. I don't think I Wick can, can let that happen. I, I don't well, think he says he's him. going to do it. I know, but, but it's just and so it ingrained happened. in him, especially when Utah takes a lead to, to take the air out of the ball, right. To, to have that, that run first mentality, but Hey, look, you're right, Gary, you, you list off some of the, the names and the talent level that they've got. It's, it's crazy. It's it's yeah. stack I mean, the receiver do, core. You'll do what's going to work best, and it see. I mean, to be honest, after spring game, I I'm still concerned about our running backs. I just am. I don't know. Like that concerns me. I feel he like got still, a transfer guy. I can't remember his name. Gosh dang it! Who's supposed to be play. pretty good? No, he didn't play. Um, Glover and uh, and uh, Bernard. Are, are you know two dudes and then and then oh my gosh what's the other guy the Vincent. Dude that transferred in yeah he's a big guy he's a big running back I can't remember his name it, I I looked it up yeah what is this by the way Gary are you a, I don't I don't have I am not a starter look are you a starter I'm are not you a Trek fan 
There's no Star Trek DVDs in here, just to clear that up. Amy Nelson says she's noticing Star Trek DVDs behind Gary. Well, what are they? Are you going to tell? I don't no, even what know we, what she's looking at. What is she looking at, Amy? I don't know what DVD set he has behind there. He's got all sorts of things behind there. Is it those, yeah. <laughs> it's not Star Trek, I can tell you that. <laughs> Anyways, yes, the passing game Sorry. is going to be probably different than what we've ever seen as a I Utah fan. I don't Let's know that we've ever Oh, it's spring game. Come on. Yeah. Temper ourselves. Yeah, it's just the weapons are there, right? That's yeah. the biggest thing. The weapons are there. Cam is back. He he he's healthy. That's the, that is the biggest thing, right? Did it surprise you that Cam played as much as he did? That actually surprised mm -hmm. me that he stayed in as long as he did. Gary and I went to it together, and I actually said that I when I saw him dressed, I went, "Okay, we're going to get a series out of it." But he played three or four series. It surprised me, and then you know, but it makes sense. He he hasn't played football like a real live action football game in a year and a half so it, it makes sense to take some level of of live rounds i mean i get it, it's the scrimmage he's wearing the yellow penny you could tell i mean whittingham had hammered it with if you get within seven feet of this dude you you're cut stop, you're cut you're gone right <laughs> find another team so you could tell and rightfully so but he looked good it's just it's just it's just different when he's back there i bryn what oh, you said different. You can just tell. And then that leadership factor, like there's nothing he hasn't seen to get up to the line. And he knows, he knows how to run the offense. He knows his reads. It's great. He doesn't panic. That's the other thing we've seen last year. That first reads not there. There's a, a level of panic, right? Well, what do I do? Not, you know, Cam, he's calm back there. He, he knows his reads. He knows his progressions and he finds his guy. So it was, it was well, great. And another thing they made mention of on the broadcast is not only, I mean, obviously we know Cam did not play on the field last year. However, he was still on the sideline every mm -hmm. single game. He traveled with the team every single game. He was in direct contact with Ludwig all the time. He was studying everything. So it's an interesting perspective of a quarterback who already knew the offense, who now has spent a year basically like being mentored by the offensive coordinator who's now coming back to play. Mm -hmm. It's a cool, I mean, the you just can't beat that kind of experience. And him and Keithy together, who both did that for a year, uh, it's going to be a dangerous pairing, those two, I think. Yeah, it was cool. This, I mean, it's just kind of that he threw it to Keithy a couple times and you just kind of go, oh, yeah, okay. That that connection, it's it's real. It's there. You know, there were a couple, I mean, yeah, it's scrimmage. I get it. But third and third and eight, third and, and boom, Keithy got the ball, moved, moved the chains. So it was it was fun to see. So it was great. What you don't really focus on uh, is the is the kicking game. So <laughs> Becker, is the guy. Becker is the guy coming back, no doubt. But we've got another guy in here, a transfer, I believe. The guy's big. He's like I think he's what six three something like that, six two. He's very tall. He hit two fifty yarders. I believe it was. Mm -hmm. He has a leg on him. I'm going okay, and he was get they they tried to freeze him at one time. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Timeout, and he and he made it. It's like a 50 yarder, and then he made it, and then I think he made another one, another long long one. Well, all I'm ball, saying is, <laughs> I like to it. see a kicker who can has some distance. Yeah, he kicks the ball, and I don't think the ball. Dang, it was nice. What nine feet off the ground? If it's just yeah. a line it's drive. Really they were line drives, but they went like Maybe 70 it, yards. It goes all the way, and it went through. And it was funny. They're trying to ice him in the scrimmage, and his own teammates are taunting him, and it was great. <laughs> it, was cool to see, cool. it was cool to see it. So, by the way, Steve, good to see you, buddy. Thanks for Hi, joining. Steve. Gary, you don't think about kickers until you realize you don't have one. Oh, as, yeah. <laughs> you know? That's great. Oh, it was nice to see some pipeline. Yeah. Yeah, they do they can get ball sack. Yeah, they can get blocked. <laughs> so you gotta be careful how you say his name when you when you say he spelled um, it with a Z. <laughs> I mean, okay, so what were your then concerns coming out of spring game? I mean, there's a lot of good to come out of it, but was there anything that just concerns you? <laughs> I, I don't mean, know. It's uh, so hard. They they're oh. 
because I don't know the guys. I, yeah, the guys that didn't play, right? I mean, Reed didn't yeah. play, Barton didn't play, Fano didn't play. Like there was a bunch of guys who just didn't play for a number of reasons. You got a, a, a lot of guys out there who are freshmen. I mean, they're announcing it, literal freshmen out of high school. So it's really hard to get a read. I guess my only concern, I I I do have a little bit of a concern at the running back position, just because I. I know what we're kind of getting. I, I really hope and expect Glover to take that next step. He showed flashes at the end of last year that he can be, you know, the guy. Um, but I, I need to see it. But it's hard. You know, there's a, so many guys that didn't play. I, I don't come out of it worried for anything. So, yeah, I can't make I, I can't make a judgment call off of spring uh, off of the spring game. Fact is, there's been all those practices, a lot of tape, a lot of a lot of film. Uh, so it's one game you get to see, and a lot of people didn't play, so I don't know. Uh, Damuni, I mean, he's out for the season yeah. with, an, with an injury or linebacker. Yeah. You know, solid veteran. So that's going to that's gonna hurt, but, to, yeah. but I don't know. I don't think anybody really knows at this point. So no, mm-hmm. I mean, the running back situation, I do have questions about it. I mean, but I can't judge it by that game because they were throwing the ball, oh, I don't know, 75, 80% of the time. It felt mm-hmm. like it. Yeah. And some guys weren't playing, so I don't know. I'm not going to read into that yet. I can, I'm can. i just going with the positives because, look, I think anyone in this chat that's been a Utah fan for years have gone to these spring games. And our offenses, I don't know, years ago, there were some bad spring ball games. Yeah, I don't like know if you 10, remember those, like fourteen to ten yeah, spring ball. Terrible. Yeah, yeah. That's not the that's not the way anymore. So I think that's I'm just going with the positive in this because it's a spring scrimmage. Yeah, and it's very vanilla. But I'm po- I feel good about what I saw and the potential that's there. I think was it you, James, was telling me? Um, did you talk to someone who was talking about Utah's defense? It was, there was an interview done and it was, it was, um, Makai Bernard was interviewed about the, the Utah defense. So you can go look it up. He just talks about how this defense to this point is probably the best defense that he's come a- across at Utah. And he said just the biggest thing that has stood out is the number of young guys who are stepping up, guys who are new to the program. Um, whether to transfer or, you know, freshmen, sophomores that are taking in these roles that need to be filled and how big they're stepping up. Cause you, when you look back, I mean, both safeties are gone, right? The, the cornerback position is a little bit of a question. Um, the linebacker, like there's, there's questions in certain areas because we're having to fill some needs and, and these guys are, are stepping up. Um, there's the one guy, gosh, dang it. I should have written his name down. Number four, the cornerback, the transfer from Michigan. Um, Calhoun. Has- yeah, he had some plays. There were a couple plays. He got beat on one one deep ball, but he looked really good too. So, um, yeah, that's again though, it's really hard to tell. I will say this though, and and we've said this before, nobody knows what's going on over there, right? When you turn on the radio and you're, or any podcast and we're listening, we admit it. They're not allowing people into these practices and these scrimmages. So the only piece that, that we're getting is these little ten minute, you know end of scrimmage that is all controlled by Whittingham because that's what he does. So um, it's really hard to judge it. Uh, but yeah, it, it, a lot of positives. I feel really good going, going into this, into fall and hopefully just stay healthy. That's, that's the biggest thing. Stay healthy, please. I mean, my, my concern always is defense. Just when you go into a season after you've, <laughs> Good yes, job, James. You made a really good point. My first time to, ever. Thank you. I'm going to screen, screen grab this. Screenshot that, James. Put it up. I'm going to put it on your wall. Quick. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is we're losing a bunch of defensive guys to the NFL. So yeah. that always makes me nervous because we have those spots to fill. However, history has taught us that a Utah defense is always going to come back and be strong and be tough. And so I'm sure we can expect to see that again. Mm-hmm. And Reed and Barton joked a lot on the broadcast about they want to become the most known linebacker duo in Utah history. And it's like, well, you've got some big shoes to compete against, but that's a good question. Who, who is the, the, who comes to your mind when you think linebacker core at Utah, 
Where do you, where do you go? Cause these guys have an opportunity to do exactly yeah, that. Well, they were talking about Lloyd and uh -huh. Sewell. Sewell. Was it Sewell? Yeah. Lloyd yeah. and Sewell. I mean, that was, but there was other ones. Um, Norris Paul was a, was a heck of a linebacker core right there. Um, they talked about Chase Hansen. Who was the guy with Chase Hansen? I can't remember who the other guy. I can't remember off the top of my head. Anyways, that's their goal. So Reed and Barton, that's their goal is to be like, like the best be linebacker cool. duo that Utah has ever had. So, but yeah, but we've got young, young guys that are stepping up in the defense. So it makes me a little nervous, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So the portal yeah. opened up today. Uh, we've lost a wide receiver. I don't think he was going to play anyway, mm -mm. but we lost our uh, starting center from the, what played eight games, something like that Yep. last year. So he entered the transfer portal. I don't know what that means. Um, uh, and then it goes till the 30th. So we'll, I, we'll wait and see. I would presume we're going to lose some others. And I would imagine on the positive side, we'll bring in some guys that we need, but um, I heard an interesting thing though, and I didn't know this is that the SEC has a rule that in this portal anyway, you can't go, you can't sign a player from another SEC team during this portal opening. So the SEC teams who have money and needs are going outside their league and are going to try to find people to lure in and pay them money. But then that in. also opens up a lot of SEC talent that would likely go from Old Miss to, you know, now Oklahoma that's in there, but they can't. So now they're going to have to look elsewhere if they transfer. So that's that's interesting. The, the the thing is, here's the here's the worry, for instance, like with Utah, is Alabama, Georgia, Ole Miss, any of the big names, they go, let's see what what teams in these other leagues, who are their big names, who would fit us well? And they could cherry pick. For instance, like a Keithy. Oh, God. Say, hey, I'm going to play for Alabama. We'll, play, we'll pay you three million bucks. It's uh, stuff like that. Yeah, no. It's all, that's, that's, that's just an example, but they, they cannot go into the SEC and pick off players from other teams. They have to go elsewhere, and they do have needs. So yeah, I, I'm not up. too worried about that. I, I don't see, obviously we're going to lose some more people. I wouldn't be surprised if we lose a, a name or two that is surprising, but I weren't Keithy rising. Those, those dudes, Bartons, they're not going in. They're not, they're not leaving. If they were going to leave, they would have left by now. Right. So they're not. James, leave. do not jinx the universe. Uh, like, don't even. Okay. Uh, there is I no guarantee of anything. That's what I'm trying to say. No. This portal is open until it's shut. Yes, that is we true. Never, never know, man. I, huh? I, I agreed with you. The portal is open until it is shut. I'm going to write that down. That's a, you can There's quote a me on quote. that. A the portal is open until it's shut. True. It's very true. Hey, this Mike, clip that one. We're going to need that one. Said that. Yeah, there's no... <laughs> that's the scary thing is there's no guarantees. Like... The guys yes. you think are going to be so solid, who knows if someone throws money? I mean, look at Jackson last year, Jaquin and Jackson, Mr. Utah, Mr. 22 forever, all of that. And he's gone. Yeah, no, I, I, I get it. I understand. By the way, he's wearing number two or sorry, number 22 at Arkansas, which is pretty dang cool. And then on that same Dream. note, Clark Phillips, he's, he changed his number to 22 as well with the uh, Falcons. I just love that. Anyway, Cass, no, you're look. Cass you're Clark. right. You're right. If if Alabama a little bit. comes out to to Keithy or whoever, money talks, right? And and they have to look out for themselves. They have to, you know, it's hard to turn down that kind of money. So I I understand it. I get it. It's just it, I would be blown away, um, especially some of these some of the bigger name guys. But yeah, we're gonna lose some people. It's just how the portal is, right? It giveth and it taketh, and you just kind of got to roll with it and hopefully we can fill some of those needs that we have with the portal, right? Like we're not a perfect team. We have to get some people that are going to be leaving some of these schools. Okay. So I'm going to put on the screen here real quick. This is, um, so ESPN pulled their 
journalists or writers or whatever, and who are the top coaches in the country. Maybe everybody saw this, but um, can you can you read that on the screen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the top ten co- college football coaches. They and they voted Kirby Smart, Kalen DeBoer, of course, the old Washington coach, and number three, Coach Witt, which he is above Dabo, <laughs> Norville, Lanning. Sorry, any we usually have a few Duck fans in our uh, chat. Uh, so sorry about that. Sarkeesian, Lane Kiffin, Leopold. Ryan Day, Ohio State. Hey, where's Texas Mike? Hey, Texas Mike, do you can you can we find Lincoln up there anywhere? No, this he's is, not even the top. This is how you know that this list is a hundred percent accurate because Lincoln Riley's not even in the top ten. So th- this is the list that everyone should go off of. Whenever they put Lincoln Riley as like number three in the country, no, 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 that's not accurate. This is Wrong. accurate. <laughs> I think the list is per, is is pretty good. Yeah, Tat says which should be number one. Hey, <clears throat> yeah, but my, we'll go with number three. That sounds good. I thought it was very. Uh, I thought I liked it. That's the respect that Coach Whittingham gets, which I'm I think surprised he by it. Honestly, when some of the other names on there being ahead of you know Lanning and Day, it kind of surprises me. Frankly, I'll take it, and it too. pleases me. Um, but yeah, well, if you listen to our interview with with Yogi, we talked that, about Whittingham, just the national level of respect and the consistency that he has done, and it's always been an upward tra- trajectory. That's the other thing about Whittingham, right? Like, there's not this one season that's a, a big bang. Yeah, we've had down seasons, but he's always been able to rebuild and kind of take it to that next level. And and that's one of the, I'm sure, one of the hardest things to do and is as a coach. So lots of national respect for him, and it makes sense. Well, yeah. And I, you know, Whittingham, okay. He hasn't won a national championship. He hasn't made it to the finals, the playoffs. So I get why, like, he's not going to be number one. He's not going to be number two, but to be number three without Mm -hmm. having won those games. I mean, that just shows you the level of respect and the people who are dialed into college football, they see what Whittingham does with, the players that he gets. We talk about it all the time. He's the best talent developer there is where you start with three star guys and then they're in the NFL having huge careers. He does that over and over and over again. So absolutely. He should be number three. So did you see the, uh, or read or hear the interview of uh, urban Meyer that he gave his eight elite teams. He feels like could win the national. This year. No, I didn't see it. So the eight teams, which he thinks could win the playoff championship. And they were, here's the eight. I wrote them down. Ohio State, Georgia, Texas, Alabama, Ole Miss, Oregon, Michigan, and Utah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's urban. The, that's, that's the elite eight. That's what we call that's it. That's the elite eight. He put <laughs> us in there. Right? Of oh. course. You say what you will. I think Herb's smart, so I'm going with it. Sounds great to me. I, I mean, mean, look at the company he puts us yeah, in. Yeah, you think great. about it, though, with, with the new playoff structure, right, and the amount of teams they're going to be getting in. You now have 12 teams getting in. Conference champions are automatically in. So, yeah, it, it's huge. It's no longer a battle just to be one of those four, right, and the politics that go into that. You win your conference, you're in the playoff, and you have a, a – as good a shot as anybody, but man, that's quite the list. That's uh, some good company. Yes, right what, did there. We, what did we have there? Oh, house. Okay. Big 10 sec, 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 big 10, big 10, Utah, big 12, big 12, big 12. Oh, that's still weird though. To say big 12. Isn't that yeah, weird? It is weird. Did you oh, see the was, picture? I was screw it up all the time. Reggie Dunn posted a picture. He's on the coaching staff. Now he posted a picture of, the Utah logo next to the the big 12 on a shirt. It just, it's weird, man. It's going to take some getting used to, but I'll get there very, very quickly. Yeah. We'll get there. Uh, (laughs) Okay. Can we talk about the good stuff now? 
Now we've talked football. Do we know when? Let me before we move on. Gary, no, we, we want to move on. What? Why? Do we know when? When what? does no. when does uh, fall camp begin? When when in the, when does summer ball start? I think it's July, isn't it? Well, I fall camp is typically Ever. August. Like, that's yeah, because they, they they get the certain amount of days that they yeah. can have before the first game. It's usually yeah. I mean. The official stuff, I think, right. it starts in August. They do like the the captain run stuff. That's kind of starts in June, July, and then the actual stuff kicks off in in August. Can I before we move on to the hockey and the NHL coming to Salt Lake? I have to I have to address something here from Lanky Boy. Oh, okay. Ask asked if the oh, Raiders nice. if the Raiders are going to. Uh, oh yeah draft a QB. Well, you know who they're going to get? Michael Penix. Penix. Fling that ball over the field, baby. I would sign me up for that. Take all the day. West. AFC West, man. I know. I've seen a couple mock drafts out that, have, that have Penix come into the Raiders and nothing could be sweeter. So Tat wants us to talk about the NFL draft. When is the draft? Next week. How many? Huh? Next week, next Thursday. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to say Maybe about we it. Get on there. Maybe we should do a pre-draft no. or a post-draft for sure. Well, well, yeah, we'll talk about it once it happens. But Tat, we have to talk about the breaking news from this week. We haven't been on here together since it happened. The NHL is Let's do it. Let's talk NHL to Utah. You don't. I think the people in the chat, maybe you don't realize like I don't what a big know. deal this is to the three of us. <laughs> they have no like, idea. This has been a lifelong dream. I never thought it was going to happen. So the fact that it's happening, it's still kind of surreal to me that I'm going to be able to watch NHL hockey in Salt Lake City starting in the fall. I don't even have to wait that long. It's starting in the fall. Oh, I'm so excited. Yep. So just just real quick, it has not been officially announced. However, the season the season ends uh, tomorrow. I think is the last game, and so the uh, expectation is on the 18th the announcement will happen, and then bring up the Coyotes. And here we go, baby. Here we go. And I so heard I did. Texas Mike. I heard that you were donating to the season ticket funds. Is that right? Ooh. I Thanks, heard that. Texas yeah, Mike. we need some yeah. donations so I can get some a lot of donations. You. Yeah, and um, Thomas Orthodontics. If you're gonna like buy a box suite or something, that could be really helpful too. Let's <laughs> here we go. <laughs> so uh, I did hear part of the agreement, and I'm not, you know, I don't know if this is official or not, but what the sources I was listening to, they were saying that uh, the owner of the Coyotes would go for it. it but they wanted to be like first on the list for an expansion team whenever that comes around yep and they're going to retain the uh coyote name and yep. logo and everything so everything's going to be new here because i we i heard people talking about yep. just being the salt lake or utah coyotes or, or whatever keeping the keeping the name like the utah jazz did when New orleans came i'm glad they're changing it uh yeah. But it's exciting. Have a professional hockey team here. I think it's going to succeed. Problem is, they're going to be bad for a while because the yeah. Coyotes aren't very good. Yeah, get that through your head because uh, this is not an expansion draft. We're not going out and pulling players and, and picking your team. We're taking the team that was already down there and coming up. Now, I will say they got some guys. Uh, if you're not a hockey fan, you know, young guy, Clayton Keller, go watch him. He's he's a superstar. So Don's kid. Um, yeah, Shane Doan's kid. So there, there's going to be some guys that are going to be up here. It's, it's exciting. We're, we're super excited. I did read earlier today and, and I didn't verify it, but I read it. So it's on Twitter. So it has to be true. Um, but the state legislature has agreed and they're going to allow them. But, but part of it is it has to be the Utah, whatever team. It's Who said part that? Of the, I, it, I don't know. I read it earlier today. Don't quote it, things you don't know or tr if they're that's not all true I, or not. That's all I do. All I do. Hi, that's Twitter. That's what Twitter that's is. Twitter right? is. Anyway, I'm super excited. I think they're going to change. Obviously, they're going to change the name because I heard the same thing that, that you heard, Gary, was that 
their owner down there. He's selling the team, but once an expansion happens, he's going to be first in line to take them back to Arizona. There's some stipulations that go along with that. He has to have a plan and an arena. They can't play at Arizona state anymore. Um, and they'll be people. Yeah. And so then they'll, they'll be able to go back there. But for us here now, there's NHL hockey starting October and Bryn tweeted this out and I could not agree with her anymore. If you are not a hockey fan, Saturday, the NHL playoffs start, and there's no better time to start being a hockey fan. Tune it on. Every game is intense. And as the playoffs get deeper and deeper and deeper, it just gets more and more intense. It's, it's, there is nothing like an NHL playoff overtime game when it's two 30 in the morning and it's in the fifth overtime and you can't go to bed. It's great. It's well, it's that's the thing is the like, best. I've had a lot of people say to me, okay, I don't know anything about hockey. I want to start being a fan. I want to start paying attention to it. And so I'm telling everybody the same thing. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect time. Like you said, James, NHL playoffs start on the 20th. So in just a few days, turn it on, watch it. It's best of seven series. So by the time these teams get to like game seven, sometimes they hate each other. They're fighting each other. It's like somebody on my tweet said, it's like a finals matchup every single round. It's that intense. So if you've never watched hockey, I get it. Maybe you're not that excited. Give the playoffs a chance and you'll be hooked. It really, it's the best playoff system, I think, in professional sports, hands down. And the most exciting. Well, the guy's got broken jaw, he's dislocated six ribs, and he's broken his foot, and he's still out there blocking shots. And then at the end of it, after they hate each other, they shake hands, and one team advances. It's fantastic. It's great. And, you know, like you said, Brent, I don't think people understand hockey's, hockey's our jam. Like, I, I, we've been hockey fans for my entire life, been playing since I was five years old. So um, if you do have questions, you want to know anything about it, reach out, because because. I think that we can provide some insight on it. So really excited. Can't okay. Wait. So of course, this is the question mm -hmm. and everybody has seen all oh, the God. names being thrown around all the things. <laughs> what is your number one right now? I keep, I keep changing mine, but what's your number I'm, one? Gary, I'll, right I'll go to you. I know, I know yours is, is the Yeti Gary. <laughs> Look, <laughs> For me, I want to go. I want to. I want the historical nature of it. I want it to be. I don't care if it's Utah. I prefer Salt Lake, but the Salt Lake Golden Eagles bring back the name. If it can't be, I get it because there's the Golden Knights. So if it can't be the Golden Knights, I would go with the Eagles. But there's such a tradition in Salt Lake City and in Utah with the Golden Eagles Hockey yeah. Club. It was iconic. Um, I remember going to Eagles games when I was in junior high school at the at the Salt Palace. There was no better place to watch a hockey game than in the Salt Palace. Um, it's too bad it's gone, or it's at least that reason, for that reason. But I used to go to the Golden Eagles games all through my, I mean, junior high school. I'm, I'm old enough to remember when the... They didn't have glass. It was the old chicken wire on top of the boards. Goalies weren't wearing masks, all of them Jeez, anyway. How old are you? So I, I was at a game and a goalie got hit in the face and the dude's picking his teeth up off the ice. I was with my oh, dad. Oh, no. Really? I didn't, that's yeah. amazing. Oh, and it was, you know, chicken wire. They're getting smashed into it. You know, then they oh, upgraded. That would hurt so bad. Got, Lexi glass, but the thing is, the old Eagles was that yellow and green, the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Now, you know, they, they went to different leagues. It was, you know, ended up in the IHL. But the thing is, the, the Golden Eagles, uh, they changed to red and white. Yeah. Because they became the, the affiliate to the Calgary Flames. Yeah. And so they were the feeder team to the Calgary Flames. We had uh, Theo Fleury. I don't know if you don't know him. He played in Salt Lake. Oh, I remember. I think, uh, is it Stu Grimson? I think played in Salt Lake. Trevor Kidd was in goal 
was our goalie for a while. He ended up playing for the Calgary Flames. Anyway, we just have a long history. Remember, remember when, when Paul Fee was here? He went to play for the Islanders. But, but yeah. that's when we were an affiliate to the Islanders. All I'm saying, I would like to have the Salt Lake Golden Eagles or the Salt Lake Utah Golden Eagles. I would go with the Eagles, and I think it'd be cool to go back to the original colors of the green and yellow. That's my preference. I see a lot of people are talking freaking Yeti. That is the dumbest, stupidest. Tell us no how way. you really feel, Gary. It cannot, it cannot be the Yeti. That I mean, it's a freaking abominable snowman from some other continent. <laughs> Makes no sense. And it's all the hikers and campers. They got all their Yeti gear. We don't want the Yeti is the name uh, of our new hockey team. Uh, there you go. Okay. I don't know if I have anything to add to that, Bryn. Do you? Man. No. Yeah. I'm not on the Yeti bandwagon. I know that's kind of like the one you hear the most on social media. I'm not, I don't like the Yeti. I would like something that is iconic to Utah. I know that's kind of difficult maybe, but like I have seen people say the black diamonds. I like Salt Lake black diamonds more than Utah black diamonds. Now the one that I'm seeing everywhere is the cutthroats for yeah, like a cutthroat fish. trout. If that's I've good for that. a baseball team. If you're a baseball team, go with the cutthroat. <laughs> I got, that's fine. Not hockey. I still like not hockey. The, I still like the Salt Lake brine shrimp. Yep. You know, I mean, I'm I'm all about that. Let, let's yeah, do that one. That's number one, the brine shrimp. No kidding. The brine shrimp. I don't know. I've, heard, I've seen I've seen people say the trappers. I just that I was mean, our baseball team. What? Our our triple A was the trappers at one time. Baseball. Oh. Team. I mean we the stingers. We don't want that. The stingers. I don't know. I just. No, no. I'm not. I'm not about team. the Yetis. Oh yeah, the Raptors. Amy, you said I've heard that one. Utah Raptors. The only problem is done. there's the the NBA team is named yeah, Raptors. I I am a little concerned about how they're going to name it. I don't know, but I'm not. I'm not about the Yeti, James. I don't think you're about the Yeti. No, either. I'm not at all. I I the I've heard we had the conversation at work today. It was. Like the, I keep seeing the Yeti, and then the the other one that keeps coming up is is the Blizzard. That's another one. And I, and yeah, then they'll do the double Z, like whoever yeah, it was. I think I, it I was, don't want that crap either. Yeah, they're not going to do Blizzard because there's, no, the there's the avalanche right next door. Yeah, exactly. I'm with you. So you can't do the Blizzard. I, the Yeti sounds like a UFL team to me, right? Like they, it just it sounds like a beer league team I would play on is the Yeti, and so I I can't get on board with that. There's a lot of names being thrown around. Blizz. The blit, the, the blizz, like the blizzard, like blizzard. <laughs> no, for me, I, I'm, I'm with Gary. If you could, if you could do the the golden eagles, I get it. There's the golden knights that are 400 miles down, so it'll never happen, which is really unfortunate because that old school golden eagle logo of the bird holding a hockey stick, it's so cool. You can tone it down even a little bit and, and make it a, a less modernize it maybe a little bit. Yeah, modernize it. A less vivid yellow and green if you wanted to, but you've got a built-in throwback right there. And it does. It, it's not just Golden Eagles for Golden Eagles sake. Like it has it has historical facts here. Um Pioneers, I've heard that one it, it won't happen. I'm partial. I played for a team called the Pioneers, so I'm partial to to that. It won't happen. Raptors I think would be cool, the Utah Raptors. Um, it's going to be the Stingers the, no, with Z's at that the That was end. a baseball oh, not. No, it's the not. Buzz. And then the stingers. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Denver Pine. The, the hard part about this is coming up with an, a name that's not already been used by something yeah. is almost impossible, right? The Denver Pioneers. And then you've got the the Raptors, the basketball team, the Eagles or the football team. It, there is a lot of crossover, though. I mean, there's <laughs> Panthers, right? <laughs> the Panthers is a hockey team and a football team. So it, it happens. But give me the Eagles. <laughs> Let's That's go. Come on, everybody. Like vote. Get a hold of Ryan Smith. Tell him you want it. The Golden I texted Eagle. Him. Ryan and I text a lot. That's so why I you do him. the brine shrimp. Nobody has the brine shrimp. <laughs> the brine shrimp. I got to say, if it becomes the brine shrimp, that was Gary. Gary came up with it first. I want, I want some royalty if that ever happened. We have no, no, it no, documented. Just, just season tickets. Mm -hmm. We'll take. Give me season tickets. <laughs> For Gary's payment, we will take lifetime season tickets. It, that's easy enough, right? Somebody well, contact yeah. Ryan Smith right now. 
Gary's ideas were the brine shrimp, the Brigham Youngs, or the Utah mountains. 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 You have to which I kind of like. Low key. I like it. Yeah. The, the antelope. The bison wouldn't be bad. You got the, the bison out there. The Not bison. Terrible. I'm on board with the bison. I can get on board with that. Just nothing, I just said, nothing hokey. I All right. Utah green green, green jello. Why not can the green jello? Important funeral stuff. potatoes. Yeah, the funeral potatoes. <laughs> green <laughs> jelly. Isn't that Brins? Green yeah. jellos. The Utah green oh. jellos. And then you throw jello onto the ice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, okay, but, hey. the playoffs are set. Give me your two. Give me your two teams out of the East and the West. Oh, I don't even have my. I don't even have it pulled up. Okay, who who do you think's gonna? Who do I think? Yeah. Uh, gonna do it? Or who do I think? Who I want to? Hold on, out of the East. Board. I don't care at this point. I mean, the, it starts Saturday. I'm pulling up. My who do you think's right gonna be the two in the final two or the final four? I don't care. What are you thinking? I mean, really... Vegas. Vegas has been dominating a lot lately. I. I don't think they're going to repeat <laughs> the Utah sister wives. <laughs> How original. <laughs> Haven't heard it. <laughs> I don't think Vegas will repeat, but I think that they're going to get far. They're going to be playing Edmonton first round, probably. Oh, where's our Edmonton fan? He's yeah, not John. Where are you, John? I know he's not here in the chat, but. Should be. Dang. What do you got, James? Uh, I'm really west. worried. I'm out of the West. I thought Give we us the East. West. Um, out of the, yeah, I, I, it's hard to bet against Vegas, especially the way that they manage the salary cap. It's really hard to bet against them. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I got to, they struggled a little bit throughout the season. They weren't dominant, but they're getting healthy right at the right time. Um, so I think Vegas is going to be a challenge, but then I would love to see a team like, uh, the Canucks, they've been great all year. I would love to see someone like that come out of the West. I don't see it happening. Um, but man, that would be, that'd be great. Anybody, but the Kings, give me anybody, but the Kings and I'm, I'm good to go. Uh, Texas, Mike, the stars have actually looked really good this year. So we'll see it's their goaltending. We'll see what happens with their goaltending buddy. Goaltending's good, man. I know, but in the playoffs, historically it's been shaky. So we'll see. And I would love, look, I'll say this. If it's, if it is Dallas, great. Cause Joe Pavelski, rock star. Gary and I actually met him a few years ago. Super nice guy. So I would I would be on board for for that. Um, and then, yeah, those, those are probably the two. And the Avalanche. God dang it! I'm so excited. No, it's Avalanche are coming out of the West. Unfortunately, yeah, it could I be. don't want them. That, that's my pick. My heart. I want the Edmonds and Oilers Oilers because I like watching McDavid and Drysaddle. That's my preference. I think it's going to be Colorado uh, or Dallas. I don't see it. I don't. I don't see the Canucks doing it. Um, Winnipeg, though, they're they're a big, just solid team. But I think Colorado somehow is going to. You come think Colorado is going to win the whole thing? Out of the coming west. out of the west. Oh, out of the west. Yeah, they got they got some dudes. Their goaltending shaky right now, though. Too. That's their biggest issue. So we'll see. They're coming out of the East, what do you got, man? It pains me, but I, I'm a scared. I'm scared of the Rangers. I think that they're oh, they're really, really, really good right now. So they're probably it the is team. So that, I can't even fathom. But the Rangers I can't. Team. I'm not going to pick them. I'm taking Carolina. Give me a Carolina. No, they're not. They're not going to be there. I like Rob the Bod, Brendan Moore, their coach. <laughs> Clayface. I love it, dude. I love it. Clayface. I can't choose an East team right now. I haven't. I I need to get into the first round a little bit and yeah. then I will pick somebody. All I know, I'll give you one guarantee. Toronto's getting knocked out in the first round. Just put your money on it. They're not going to win it. No, they don't. they're not going to win it. It's what they do. Pro, they get in the first round. They too many goals, man. They got great. They're too they're soft. Not, yeah, they're not built to get punched in the face. All right, Gary. You got Boston, you got the Rangers. They're always oh, there. Boston. So, all right, there you go. Little hockey. All we can say is we are absolutely thrilled. We're so excited. We will be talking more hockey. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna sneak it in here somewhere. I mean, we are Utah football fans, but we are massive hockey fans. And with this coming to Utah, it's just bright future ahead. All right. Well, again, Texas Mike, 
he's saying that the uh, Maple Leafs have the best uniforms. You agree with that? I like them. I think they're they're iconic. They are cool. I wouldn't say they're the are best. You Jersey the best? Devils red. Okay, are you saying the best uniform, Texas Mike, or the best in sports? No. Wow. No. They don't even have, the, they have a horrible I don't think logo. He, no, I don't think he said sports. He just he said, he said uh, maybe sports. Best uniform in sport. They've got a horrible logo. It's blue. Give me, give I me like the, it. It's no, blue. it's just blue. They just threw it. <laughs> the blue maple leaf? Of, yeah, it's so boring. Oh, man, that's it's cool. That's what makes it beautiful. It's just very that's simple. That's not my favorite. No, I would take the Red Wings over that, and I would and the take Red the Blackhawks. Bla give me the Blackhawks. Give me the Blackhawks. Best logo in sports is the Blackhawks logo. Not even close. Best logo in sports. It's I iconic. So, Olympics this coming. Is, this will be a discussion for another time. I got to think about this. Best logos. Everybody, if you don't, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot here. There. That are not hockey fans or have been into it. Look up the New Jersey Devils logo, particularly on their red. You'll agree that is pretty sweet, especially in the '90s when it was green or the '80s. Real when sweet green. when it was green. All right. Well, we could talk about this all night, but all right, let's do it. Let's, let's stop. Let's go. Let's talk more hockey. Is that? <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of we people will that are be talking out of their more minds because they don't tune in for our hockey. But Exactly. No, we will be talking more hockey because playoffs again. They start this weekend. Make sure you're Saturday. tuning in. You're going to get hooked. You are going to get hooked. I can guarantee it. But make sure you are following along, that you're subscribed. And again, hit the notification button so you know when our next episode is coming up. We will be doing another one in a couple weeks. It's probably not going to be weekly during spring, but we'll be doing them every once in a while. And yeah. We've got hockey to talk about now, <laughs> not just football. <laughs> Gary's going to change out that flag behind him. Slow, the background's slowly going to change <laughs> to more hockey back there. Here, here's one rule though to to the rookie hockey watchers. Okay, but when here's you start the watching, a, this, is a, this is this is just the rule. Bryn, when listen you start up. Start watching, a, and this Bryn, this is for you. Gary's rule to life, blah, blah, oh, it's, blah, it's, blah. it's one of the rules, the natural rules of existence. This is one of them. Natural rights, this is one of them. <laughs> it's in the Constitution, uh, actually. Yeah, I think it is. It's in the Declaration of Independence somewhere. Um, <laughs> when you start watching a hockey game, you have to watch till the end, and it doesn't matter how many overtimes it is. You got that? You have to go to the end. You can't watch the game and then, oh, it's one overtime. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. No. The rule is once you've started a game, you're in. You'll be blessed for it, though. I'm just telling you. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, especially when it's a game that you. the game doesn't start till eight o'clock Utah time. So by the time <laughs> the second overtime is going to intermission, it's 12 30 at night. Anyway. Yeah. All right. There you go. I... Go, you, so. go, you. I go don't hockey. abide by that. Come on, I'm excited but... this year. For this year. Yes, go Utes. <laughs>